The question which I, I shared with you, Rachel, the other day, I don't know if you sent it around everyone else, but it was fairly straightforward, um, is just what, what is your relationship to the studio? And then within that context, um, you know, how's your practice or relationship to the studio been impacted through 2020? Uh, has your practice changed in the time leading up to last March? Um, and, you know, what, what has having access to the studio or having had access to the studio in that time meant to you, you know, because there's a lot of studios that have had to, you know, they're part of wider complexes, so they've not had the same control as well that Hazelhurst has had on, on, on your space. Um, and they've not been able to access when they maybe should have been able to access. Right, I'll, I'll go around um, clockwise, just what's on my screen, and I'll, I'll start with you, Rachel, if that's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, my relationship with the studio is, is kind of one of um, a, a separate space for my other work, uh, a space for me to be able to be creative and um, develop my art practice um, away from home, away from my office at work, um, and just have that space that's that's for me and my artwork really. Um, I don't always get to use it that way. It has some time turned into a little bit of a uh, uh, a space for paperwork rather than artwork, let's say. Um, but it is still really important um, a little little area for me to develop that kind of practice and and just work away on creative things. Um, it in relation to. Uh, the 2020 and everything that's been going on with COVID, it probably has impacted where I would have gone because I've not been able to access my sewing machines and things as much as I would have normally have done, which is what I would yeah. usually be away on a sewing machine. Um, and I've probably gone down a lot more hand, um, hand embroidery and um, actually digital art um, oh. a lot more than I would have done. Um, which has been have, very interesting. Have there been positives to that? Because obviously hand embroidery, you, yes, it takes a lot longer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, have, have there been positives to, you know, for, for you? Has <laughs> it sort of opened up new routes? There has, because it, it actually enabled me to um, delve down cyanotype and in hand embroidery. So I very, very briefly sort of looked at it before lockdown sort of kicked in and then um, we 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 able to have a little, a little fund to, as a collective to pay for some equipment for stuff that we wanted to develop and, and practice and stuff. And with that, I bought some UV lights and cyanotype equipment um, and I was able to then combine that hand embroidery um, with the cyanotype. Whereas I think if I had my sewing machine, I probably would have gone down a different route than that because I would have been looking at that so it's enabled me to go down a completely new printing technique that I've never really done it before which has been really interesting and has developed my digital art which is then fed into my embroidery so it's kind of made a nice sort of circle of development that I probably wouldn't have done if it hadn't been for lockdown yeah, yeah. How, how have you how have you managed it then in terms of you know, the, the really boring question, but, you know, the COVID safety of it, how's that? Because I, I'm sure there are still studios that would benefit from a bit of yeah. experience. Um, so we, we limited our, um, access for anybody who isn't a resident artist. So we would normally have um, associate access as well, so which we've, we've, we've not allowed. Um, so it just limited the numbers to people who had their own studio spaces. Um, we have... Anybody who has their own studio space, so we have little separate areas rather than a big open plan. Anybody who has their own studio, it's been a case of you, you man your own cleaning and you, and you keep your own space and nobody really goes in to those spaces. If you share a space that you could create a timetable so that you're not in the space at the same time and you, and you man the cleaning between the two of you. And the communal areas, there is a strict case of you use, you clean, and then, you know, and that sort of thing. And, and reduce numbers within the, the building at one time. And if there's a certain level, we're opening up ventilation and making sure windows are open for if people yeah. are in the same room at the same time and things like that. Uh, and mask wearing in communal areas as well, so that, you know, there's no, no um, and that sort of point of view. But we're, we're quite lucky that we were able to basically shut up shop and that only resident artists could access 
Um, yeah. And it, it, it did mean that those sort of safety concerns were a little bit easier to manage because we were dealing with limited number of people. I just yeah. add that we, we, we all now make sure that we're tested for COVID because we're fortunate <laughs> to have a centre in, in Runcorn that allows us to do that. And really that's your passport to get you through the door now if you're COVID free. Um, yeah, and the other thing around. was in the Hazelhurst group that we've got, we were able to communicate with each other and say, are you going in or is someone else in? And then we work out from that, you know, when was a good time for you individually to go in. And that, that's been a big help, I think. Right, I'll, I'll, move, I'll move on to Maria just... Um... OK, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, um, I found um, really the studio was a dream come true for me because I, I wanted to go to art college, but my dad had other ideas. And I've waited this long to, to actually get um, this sort of place to do my work. It's a place of creativity. It's a place for me to maintain my sanity, especially in the lockdown, because I just get a bit restless. And I also think it's a place for reflection and experimentation. Mm. And, and one of the reasons... I never wanted to work at home on my own was that you don't get that shared um the sharing of skills and opportunities to discuss work uh, with, you know that would be missing if i'd worked at home all the time and i really benefit from I, other people bouncing ideas off me or just saying what are you doing that for you know it gives you a chance to think about well, yeah, why am i doing that it's interesting because we've got one of the festival artists is doing a phd currently on um women artists and what she's terming as ad hoc paint ad hoc painting um <laughs> as in pa painting between jobs and painting between roles and sort of and, and maintaining that relationship with art in an mm -hmm. informal way but taking it seriously through your whole life and kind of maybe maybe dedicating more to it to it they try to when, when did you actually take that step and decide decide that it was maybe not that important what your dad thought of where you oh, went. Oh, well, um, one of five, you sort of do as you're told at some point, because you're under his room. <laughs> I always kept a sketchbook going, and then I would take classes wherever I could. But I was fortunate to be in the teaching profession where you could do art in lots of ways. Uh, and that was a very subversive way of getting other people to do it and enjoy it, or and to satisfy my need to do it, if you like. And uh, I worked in Liverpool, and that seemed to work incredibly well with the children that I worked with. And then... Um, they got over the shock of making a mess and all that kind of thing. So I enjoyed that. And then uh, I spoke to a colleague and I, we, we, I started the City and Gills programme. So did that part time for four years because I thought when I finish work, what am I going to do and how can I prove that I'm qualified to do these things? Uh, so that's really was part of the process of getting the qualification to say, look, yes, I can do this now and I've got the paper to prove it. Uh, and that gave me confidence to sort of branch out and start doing different workshops and stuff from the studio if you like. I'll move on to Kathy just um yeah just while we're here um sorry go on Kathy. Yeah I, I was just going to say that because I live about 12 miles from the studio um when it's been proper lockdown it's been a bit difficult because it warrant you know warranting going driving that distance um mm. because I started going back again in September when things eased up and then lockdown came in January again and that's um sort of I felt it sort of stopped me going in and what I've really missed is we've got a printing press at the studio and since we've had the studio, my work's really developed into print. That's the direction I've taken. Yeah. And so without the press, I couldn't do etching. There's so many things I couldn't do. I've got at home a little book binding um, press. So I've been making lino cuts, like A5 size lino cuts, which has been quite interesting because it's sort of, when you're limited, you're perhaps creative, but there's so many things I'd like to do that I can't because I'm not in. Um, and I do miss the sort of the talk and the the ideas and the all that goes on in the studio. I've got another thing that's um, for cutting shapes out, which I use. But this is um, it's a really really heavy, book, you know, old fashioned, yeah. which is absolutely brilliant. And I'm sort of experimenting with putting longer boards in and seeing how much pressure that gets on the length. Okay. Um, but it's still, but also things like you know etching with chemicals and, and things like that. You can't really do that in the kitchen, whereas you feel a bit safer doing that in a studio environment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just you, you just reminded me, Kathy, that that I'd blocked out from my memory that that Witness Library has a book press that like that, like you're talking about, but they use it as a doorstop. <laughs> <laughs> I might go and try and rescue it, see if it's still there. Fabulous. Um, uh, Ellie, um, you're, you're on mute currently, but um, I'll, I'll move on to you. 
Um, so I, I came here about four years ago. I was still at college at the time. Um, I was gobsmacked, to be honest, because I live in Runcorn and I'd never heard of it before. So I came here to interview somebody, an artist here, for um, a project I was doing at college. And it just so happened that there was a space available. So I took it off, off their hands. Oh. And um, <laughs> I was in college still for the first two years. So I think I was, I was using it to work, but it was also a bit of a storage unit, to be honest. Yeah. But um, I went to uni and I picked a uni that was quite far away and I was driving in every day. And um, long story short, it didn't really work out, but I thought if I didn't have this space, I don't think I would have had the courage to walk away and actually say, you know, I've got an idea in my mind and I want to do this. So that sort of came into place and just kept working really. And slowly the commissions started coming in and things were picking up. And with the lockdown, it was sort of, I hate to say it, but it was sort of stress that spurred me on because I didn't know in March last year if they were going to keep me on at work. I didn't know if I'd be out of a job. And anyway, yeah. in the end, um, I did I did end up leaving work and I took everything home, everything that was in here, the entire place got emptied. Hmm. And in those three months that I was out of work, by the time I ended up going back to the studio in July, I had enough work under my belt to start a business. So I made prints of my work from there and been selling them from there. So in some senses, it was yeah. painful, but it was a bit of a blessing in disguise, really. Yeah. Because it all worked out for the best in the end. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it can take the worst circumstances, can't it, to just kind of force you into that position that you've got to make one idea work yeah that was the thing it was having that time finally to actually say this is what I want to do and I'm going to use this opportunity to do it so yeah yeah I mean it, it sounds as well I think it, it's a really good example of the value of studios to people because it's not just the space is it it's that mm. it's the ability to to actually produce and to develop in a way that I guess like I and Correct me if I'm misinterpreting it, but um, it sounds like you're sort of saying you, you developed far more as a result of the studio within your own practice than you did as a result of college or... or yeah. That. So, so the, you know, that, that the studio has played that role of, of development that ordinarily for, for, for most artists would be university. And I guess in a really blunt way, probably far better value because you don't have a 23 grand loan over your head well this is the thing I mean it sounds terrible to say it's because of this place that I dropped out of uni but yeah. it was just it was that sort of sense of I was paying a lot of money for something that I already have which was the studio space yeah so yeah there was a sense of, and I think I was getting into the habit as well of using education as a sort of security blanket yeah. instead of actually going out and doing exactly what I wanted to do because it felt like too much of a risk at the time yeah but it was just that feeling of no I've got this I'm going to use it yeah. to the best of my abilities yeah you've, of, all, of all of the stories I've heard doing the studios I think that's probably the the best use of lockdown that I've heard so far I've been <laughs> laughing, you know, so, well done um, <laughs> yeah um, on that, I'll move on to um, Alison. Right? Hi. Hi, Alison. <laughs> Hi. Um, well, um, very much like everybody else, the, the reason that I originally joined the studio was for uh, the mixing with other artists and that shared experience. I uh, finished doing some courses uh, at university and then uh, I was fortunate enough to have a space at home, a studio at home that I could work in. And that was fine to a point, but it was just felt so isolated. So when the opportunity came up to join Hazelhurst, it was just perfect really. And uh, that to me has been one of the most important, that sharing of ideas and um, just being in a communal space. Um, I, spent a lot of the first years at Hazelhurst um, having to travel abroad and travel 
and then when I was home and I could come into the studio and was full time, it's like a sort of a lifeline, really, a sanctuary, just to top up my uh, my need for my um, creativity. Um, and then last year, when my husband retired, then I started coming in. That was the year before last. I started coming in a lot more. Now, unfortunately for me, my experience last year was that I have ended up shielding. So I couldn't physically get into the studio as much as I would like, but um, I was lucky enough to have space at home that I could continue to work. But what has been really, really important to me was the continued contact with people at the studio. Um, you know, through the Zoom meetings and just things going on, the draw on Halton and, uh, yeah, you still kind of felt that you were in touch. A lot of people have had such a challenge of, of not only not having access to space, but not having access to people to talk to. So I think, like you say, even though you were shielded and not able to access, it's lovely that you've had the chance to engage with, with, with you, you know, with your peers, with everyone else who is there at the studio. Claire, um, I will move on to you and your bit. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, the, stu the studio has been essential for me. There's there's no way that I could work from home with my stuff, um, and I don't want to either. <laughs> <laughs> um, when when I came to the studio, I was still a full time carer for my mum, so the studio became an escape from that way of life. Um, and unfortunately, she's passed away since then, um, and lockdown would have been a very similar circumstance to my life before I had the studio where you were just in isolation all the time and that just wasn't something that I was prepared to do again um, and lux having the luxury of a studio is something that you can't really let go of once you've got it yeah <laughs> um, on, on Instagram recently I shared a picture of what it's like if I do have to work from home which involves a shopping basket and then on top of the shopping basket is a box and on top of the box then is my laptop and that's my table at home <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and that's that's quite fine when you're just doing an admin day and paperwork day but it's just not it nothing can compare to having the space of a studio where you've got the luxury of your own space but having the community room to work bigger the people to talk to and um, bounce ideas around. The, you can't you can't compare to that. And I would say, like from the COVID point of view, if you're self-employed and you rely on your self-employed earnings, you don't have the luxury of stopping. So there was no stopping when the pandemic hit. It was how do you do things differently, and what do you do next? So I would say myself and Rachel in particular, we took on the baton from the funding side of things and looking how we could support a studio from that way, from a selfish point of view, because it's for us as well. But also, as Alison pointed out, the studio is important to us all and keeping it running um, means a lot. But that meant a lot, of, a lot of changes, a lot of learning new things. When people were wanting workshops and reaching out for local artists to provide this, this gap that people needed with via Zoom. I had no idea what we were doing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> we were like, how do, how do you, if you don't like being in front of the camera and stuff, which I don't, how do you work out these camera angles that you can still do something, but not feel like you look like a weird potato on screen? <laughs> So, and we got approached um, from various different organizations, from libraries, me, because I'm a member of the Women's Institute, I did a few um, online, like, step-by-step -step tutorials, then we did some for the library, um, Rachel was brave and she'd done straight-to-camera stuff talking, but didn't necessarily like that, so we tried to find a way of merging those two together when we were asked to do some um, CPD stuff for local um, school network, Holton Primary Art Network. So we did a combination of that, but Rachel took the baton and done the front of camera stuff and I was the weird assistant. <laughs> um, but that was done and we uploaded that onto YouTube, but then we had no interaction from the teachers. And then we were like, oh, we just thought, we thought that we'd got it then. We thought that would work, but then we're out the Zoom aspect of the talking thing. We, were, we got no feedback and we learned a lot doing that. I'll move on to um, Cliff, if that's all right. Yeah, <clears throat> that's fine. Okay. Uh, I've had a I've had a practice for over twenty years now uh, with no uh, kind of um, training or academic background. So at a certain point, I thought I'm going to go off and get my certificates, 
um, and was told, go off and do a master's. So uh, my first introduction to um, to this kind of thing was uh, doing a master's in press, which I, which I enjoyed. And so that eventually threw me in, into doing a PhD, in, which I'm doing at the moment at Chester. Um, so I, I draw um, and I'm interested in, <clears throat> in why we draw and what drawing's all about. Um, and at the moment I'm exploring the notion of drawing as a, as a human behavior that allows us to kind of inhabit the world in, in, uh, in geographical and uh, emotional and psychological uh, terms, really. So the, so the, the studio to me is a space uh, which I fill up because I'd, I'd worked at home, I'd filled up my front room, I'd filled up my garage, I'd filled up the summer house with stuff. Um, <clears throat> So, um, and the timing of starting a PhD and uh, the offer of a space in the studio um, was good because it meant I had another space to fill up with stuff um, and pretend to make art in um, and draw in. Um, but most of the time I found I, I work actually outside. I work in, in places and that it being in the place is really important and walking around and moving around in the place is really important. Um, but I was producing work in North Wales um, and on the beach and up in the mountains there. And also there's a really interesting space just at the back of the studio, which is um, kind of a supporting wall to the, to the, to the um, Bridgewater Canal that passes, passes by. It's, an, it's a car park and you see it all the time and it's nothing. And then one day you think, wow, that's a really interesting space, which with these bayed off, these sections of bays, so ideas of making that into a, a gallery or whatever. So I started drawing those in a very detailed way uh, mm -hmm. and then drawing them with zebras in and drawing them with cars and then drawing them with princesses in. Um, <clears throat> and then COVID came um, and uh, it slowed me down. I was, I'm already slow, but it slowed me down immensely. Um, but what it also did was uh, took away my places. I didn't want COVID to become a kind of a, a negative entity if you like it's negative enough but I, having it inf infect my work as well in a negative sense well while, while you're off mute i'll move on to you um okay bye. thank you um well i started off as an associate at the studio and then um for some reason claire felt that she'd be quite happy to share a studio space with me so i was very lucky about <laughs> that um another hat of mine is a holistic therapist so my artwork tends to be an extension of that um, so I like to paint mandalas and um, energy and circles and all things circular, preferably. I, I'm a bit obsessed with circles. Um, so it's it's kind of a two prong thing. One of it is part of my work and the other prong is actually it's time for me because I'm also mum and part time job and wife and everything else. So it's actually a really, really vital lifeline for me as well to be able to have this space to myself and do artwork there um as far as the studio like as part of my life it is actually an absolute it's invaluable resource really because it's you've just got all the like-minded people every time I see people I get new ideas it's inspirational um I'm actually working on a really uh easy small piece of work at the moment I'm, to, I'm actually working on uh watercolors for a oracle deck for cards okay. so um when covid struck i actually went down to the studio and got all my stuff because it was something that i could do at home um i haven't done any of it <laughs> so <laughs> we thought you know we say oh we we can do this at home we'll work from home but it just seems that mm -hmm. once i've moved my artwork out of the house it's just kind of closed in around it and and there's just kind of you know without that space but when i come down to the studio um, the amount of headspace I get and the amount of, like I said, inspiration and um, collaboration, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I just find, and I get so much done, um, so much done in a really short amount of time because it's a concentrated time. It's why you're there. Yeah. And, you know, you yeah. can't do the washing up if you're sitting in the studio. <laughs> yeah. How, how have you found sort of um, holistic, holistic therapy this year? Have you managed to do... Any, any of that side of things with, with other people? No. 
No. Really. Yeah. It's, it's just been shut down. Um, I'm a counsellor. I'm, I'm a newly qualified counsellor. So that has been, it's been possible for some of that to continue. Yeah. Massively restricted. But where it's things like healing and meditation. Meditation we've, we've put online. That's gone onto Zoom. Yeah. Meditation group. But again, because of the stress of it, we've yeah. kept it very closed. So it's kind of supportive as well. So it's impacted from the point of view of no new members or anything like that because it's, yeah. it's been a safe space for everybody. Yeah, it's been, I've spoken to a few um, art therapists and holistic therapists, I think this, this the last few weeks, and I think uh, it's really apparent that there's this whole, you know, in, in a time where everybody needs that most, <laughs> that yeah. it's one of the hardest things to facilitate. Um, and partly that's because of the quality of the experience you get online. I guess it isn't the same as in, in person. And it's one of those it's one of those mediums where it is really, really impacted. Yeah, because because even just things like we we had some we were hoping last year to do some community artwork in the in the garden and things like that. And, you know, and there's a real um, there's a real coming together with that as well. And a collaborative again, that collaboration and yeah you just can't do it and the, there is a place for it online so the other way is that actually my reach has got a lot further so there's some there's a monthly workshop I do as well so I've got people coming to that from all over the country and I've reached as far as Norway but so so it's kind of like a, a double-edged sword but the the real element of we'll say healing or something you know you can't and counseling with masks on you know, you're trying to read other people's emotions. Yeah. So I'll, I'll move on anyway um, to Nick, just because we're, we're, we're nearing the hour point. And I think um, once once the podcast gets over an hour, um, we're, we're in dangerous territory. Um, okay. <laughs> sorry, you're right, Nick. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Just planning a lesson for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so, relationship with the studio, yeah, it is kind of a, a, a home from home almost. Um I think some of the other studio members have just, you know, highlighted the fact that it's it's become um, just a space where you can. It's just like a like a like a big bedroom or a garage, or sometimes where you can just go there and have that equipment available all the time. Um, the way the work's changed as well. I mean, obviously, I've, I've started teaching a few years ago full time, so that's really changed my timetable. And again, just in in terms of twenty twenty. Um, and the COVID and everything, it you, you, you does work. You work. My work has changed. Um, I've not been walking around taking pictures of people in the street, just be, uh, just out of kind of respecting people's privacy. And that's I, I initially thought I would be. It'll be a great to document um, COVID and the impact on its people. And the whole kind of photography scene, documentary scene, is quite interesting. It's quite devoid of any of that imagery. And I, I, I envisioned myself creeping around Manchester in the evening, mm. photographing people from, you know, from vantage points and things. And I haven't done any of it, to be honest. Mm. I haven't taken a picture of one person with a mask on. Because mm. um, I, I, I just didn't think it was my place to do that. And kind of, it's, it, and, that, and that surprised me. Um, so I've got, I've, I've developed, I've, I've started doing more, 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 more sewing, more, writing more drawing um and and more digital stuff as well and think of trying to make connections between people who are kind of at, at, at forced to be at distances from each other so i mean there was a nice a really nice project i saw and it was photographing kids um in the prom dresses and stuff like that who wouldn't who, who couldn't didn't get to the school prom yeah but had this kind of indiv these individual ceremonies in the backyards and things like that so i think it's that looking back into those you know, those small, those family situations. Um, and I've been documenting my families and stuff like that. Um, and that's, again, it's turned inwards rather than looking outwards at other people, how they're being affected. Yeah. Um, and you think you're doing all right. And, you know, but it's those little things that you will look back on in, a, you know, in years to go and you think, yeah, that was a bit odd. Um, yeah. yeah. And obviously I've just got, I'm still, we re went back to school on the 8th, back to college on the 8th. So I've got access to my dark room and everything now. So, um, yeah. In my creative arts building, so that's that's one thing that's that's been yeah. so a you, good. Recently, are you are you in the uh, staff room 
currently. Yeah, I'm in staff room now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a staff room by behind you. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. That, that was sorry. That was just sort of, I think it's slightly unrelated to your practice, I guess. But I, I kind of intrigued as to how that's worked for you because are you have you working every time between the lockdowns and I, I guess occasionally in some of the lockdowns? Yeah. So throughout the lockdown, constantly, I see the studio has been my classroom. Um, so I've been delivering online classes. So even if I've been there, and again, it's been great because I can I can between lessons, I can get the sewing machines out or I'm in processing film and stuff like that. So it's it's been pretty active and pretty running back and too. But that's you know it's been quite a productive time to be honest. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of kind of a, you know, and obviously that's fed into my own work as well. And and um, yeah. Especially in terms of like you know looking at what what access people have got to technology as well. That's been a really eye, big eye opener yeah. um, for a lot of people. So um. it's interesting, <laughs> and it's it kind of educated a lot of those people without them really knowing about it. And you think yeah. next time a grown up sees a QR code, you'll know <laughs> what to do with one. And yeah. yeah, and then you think like it opens up things like augmented reality and stuff like that. Then. Yeah. Because maybe these some of these been some of these barriers in the past with different different demographics about engaging. So, but, but you could, you know, it, it is quite interesting how, how much of that learning subconscious has gone on. Yeah, yeah, and then definitely. Think, yeah, interesting. Yeah. Um, All right. Um, uh, yeah. Amazing. Thank you, everyone. Um, All right. <laughs> I think, yeah, there's, there's, there's not really a point trying to wrap everything up because everyone's had different experiences and it's not going to tie in with anyone else's experiences because everyone's had individual yeah. horrific and wonderful experiences in sort of slightly <laughs> equal measure, I guess. But um, yeah, it was, it was, thank you so much for your time. Um, and yeah, I think, um, Rachel, I'll, I'll send you a little email just to ask, um, you know,